starting your day right. <laughs> it's always a good day to start your day right. You know, I think one of the benefits of taking the extra time in the morning or at noon or at night to read a devotional or to study the Bible is to set your mind and your direction in a different thought pattern or a different perspective than you might not have thought of before. For instance, if you sit down in front of a television set, does not watching TV attract all your attention? Or if you pop in a CD and you put on some earbuds and you're walking down the street, have you ever noticed how you're pretty much focused in on what you're hearing as opposed to what's going on around you? Those are things that input into us a certain amount of choices made for us in the direction of which we'll go. So before you start your day in a direction that might be doing something else, why not take the time to spend it with the Lord? <laughs> I know for me, I would prefer to know what's going to happen in my day by God preparing me for it in some way. Now, obviously, the whole day unfolds like a surprise. Now, to God, it's no surprise, but to us, it's an unveiling of what he's already seen and known. But I would rather have the tools that I need for, say, if I was driving my car and I got a flat. I'd prefer to have a spare in the car. I'd prefer to have my jack. I'd prefer to be ready for it. And when we do those things and we know that they're common sense and we call it just common sense it's practical i mean after all you put on your pants that's practical you wash your face maybe <laughs> you shave i hope but if we do those things that are practical to our physical world why don't we do those things spiritually that we know are just as practical in the spiritual world and that's what Jesus said when he did, and he gave us an example by spending time prior to his day starting with his Father. That is why we should, it doesn't mean we have to, it doesn't mean that God can't do what he's going to do anyways, it doesn't mean that he needs us to do anything, but wouldn't you want to be prepared for the day? I know I do, <laughs> that's why... I start my day and in each and every one of these whenever I share devotionals or evotionals as these are I always try to reiterate at some point in time that God desires as it says in the scriptures for you to hear his voice now that can be through going to church on Sunday and sitting down and hearing God speak through a pastor. It could be through someone coming up to you and sharing a good word aptly spoken in the right time and the right setting and it just seems to inspire you. It could be the most unusual set of circumstances that suddenly you see, oh, that must have been the Lord. Like Jacob found when he was dreaming at Peniel and he saw the ladder with angels rising and falling or climbing and coming down on the ladder and he said I didn't know the Lord was here God wants to delight you and have you discover that he can meet you where you're at but he also has set in place certain things that are beneficial to us that we can do to maintain our personal intimacy with God reading the Bible is one of those my wife every day reads a portion of scripture. I recommend that to everyone. She attends a church. I recommend, so do I, but I recommend that to everyone. You should not forsake the assembling together of the brethren. Now, can you? Of course you can. You could go do your own thing and God will still save you. But it's kind of like when you have a power tool as opposed to a screwdriver. With the power tool, you can just pop that sucker in and guess what? Whatever it may be, whether the torque setting is right or not, but whatever it may be, you can get the job done a lot quicker and have more time for other things. Now with a screwdriver, you're depending upon your strength, and if that screw has been torqued in, 
you might not have the ability to pull it out. So too, when you use the right tools for the right job, you accomplish so much more. And that's what devotionals, Bible study, church, prayer, fellowship, and developing a personal relationship with Jesus is all about. It's just as practical as you want it to be, or it can be just as tough on you as you don't realize that a lot of what you might be going through, if you were prepared for the day, it might not be so tough on you. So, in Evotional, the key to loving others. Now may the Lord of Peace himself grant you his peace, the peace of his kingdom, at all times and in all ways, under all circumstances and conditions, whatever comes. 2 Thessalonians 3.16 the Bible says to love your neighbor as yourself, Luke 10, 27. The key is to love your. Well, I'm not sure that I'm going to go with this one, but we'll, we'll read it and then we'll see. The key is to love yourself. You won't enjoy your day until you learn to accept and enjoy yourself because you have to eat with yourself, sleep with yourself, and be yourself all day. Unless you are happy with who you are and where you are in life, you will never learn to love others or get to where you want to be. You know, it's interesting that this particular post I'll stop with because there is a philosophy in life that says you have to love yourself in order to love others and the reality is no it's not true because the love that God put in you it says that he loved you first before we loved him and that he will instill love in us that we could love others with the love that he has loved us with so it comes from God and returns back to God that we are infused with that love by it coming into us. People that have a personal self-esteem issue with hating themselves or dealing with this idea of poor self-esteem isn't a false reality, but it's a false idealism with which sometimes counseling goes in a different direction than what the scripture says. Nowhere does the scripture say, love yourself. No, it says, love your neighbor as yourself. So, God assumes and presumes that you already do love yourself in some way. Now, when you accept the fact of pointing your heart towards God and you want to understand what he has to say, he says, I love you. Now, if God chose you and loves you, then what is the problem with you accepting his choice? You see... The direction goes outward as opposed to inward. If you choose to fix your own self-love of loving yourself, then it goes inward and you become narcissistic. You begin to see self as a desirable thing to improve and to build upon when God has already said, no, deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. I love you, I know what's best for you, I created you, I will fill you with my love, not your love for yourself. There's a big difference there. It's kind of a catch-22 for some people, but to me it's pretty simple. You know, I'm not so thrilled. I got a body that's sinful. I got a body that's flesh. You know, I got a body that, hey, you know, it's good for this period of time span, but guess what? It's not equipped for eternity. Do I love my body? <laughs> well, you know, it tends to house the Holy Spirit, and, you know, sure, I take care of it because it's an outer dead garment, but... The reality is I love what God is doing on the inside and so I love what God has become in me so that I can love the choice he made of me all of it focused back to God that way love is not dependent upon your feelings but upon his decision to love you it's a conscious choice that God has made and the feelings will follow as you know you're loved by God. Now, a lot of people take that as, well, you know, I feel the feelings because I'm blessed. Well, that's true. Some people only feel love when they have the feelings of love. But there's more to it than that. There's a conscious act of love, which is what Jesus did. Oh, Jesus healed people, and they felt love. Jesus raised the dead and they felt loved. Jesus did all these marvelous miracles and they felt loved. But then he said something interesting to them. He said, you only follow me for the miracle's sake, but do you love me? And they walked away because they did come for only the miracles. 
when he said those things that were too hard for them to understand, then they left him. Love doesn't do that. The love of God is manifested in the actions of God, which is what Jesus did on the cross. He said, I am love. I am demonstrating God's love to you. I am denying myself, dying on the cross, and I will be rose again so that you too can love like God loves. But it doesn't require you to love yourself. It requires you to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. And when you do, then all those blessings come. It's a fine line. But if you love yourself, all I can say is, it's a pretty lonely place to be. But if you love God and love your neighbor, I think you've incorporated eternity.